Hey Blender Maniacs, this is Alex Korbard for BlenderMania3.com and in this tutorial we're going to take a look at all the different settings of the new fluid simulation in Blender using Mantaflow. So this is going to be really awesome. I just have a quick starter file here with a cube which is a domain set to liquid and the cache end frame is 200 and then a fluid object set to flow, liquid and geometry. If you want an introduction to Mantaflow and the new fluid simulation, check out my other video, link in the description. But for now, let's jump into these different settings, shall we? Let's kick it off with flow behavior. We have geometry on the left and inflow on the right. Geometry takes your geometry and creates fluid from that, as you can see on the left. Inflow basically continuously inflows fluid into your domain. Now you could animate this so that it stops inflowing, but that's up to you. You can see the clear differences here, pretty awesome. The next option is resolution divisions. We have 64 on the left and 200 on the right. Clearly, the more resolution, the higher quality your fluid will be, but also the more time it will take baking and also the slower it will be. Then we have the time scale. The time scale is pretty much the speed of your fluid. By default, it's set to 1, which is on the right, but as you can see, it's a little bit fast by default with Mantaflow. So I like to set mine to a lower value. On the left, it has a value of 0.5, and you can see it's a lot better. Next option we have is border collision. Get this, guys. We could actually set which walls the fluid will collide with. On the left, we have all six walls enabled, whereas on the right, we only have the top and bottom walls. You can see the clear difference where on the right, it only goes to the floor and then kind of disappears. Next, we have flip ratio. The higher the value, the bigger the splash is. The lower the value, the smaller the splash is. You can see on the left, we have a value of 0.97, which is the default, and we have a lot bigger splashes. On the right, a value of 0.1, and the splashes are a lot smaller and sadder. Right here we have the particle radius. Now the higher the value and the simulation seems to lose volume, the lower the value and the simulation seems to gain volume. So you can see on the right with a particle radius of 2, it seems to lose volume and the volume of the water goes away. And on the left, it seems to gain more volume and it has a value of 1. Next we have particle maximum and minimum, and the max and minimum amount of particles per cell is basically dictated by this value. The higher the value, the more particles in your simulation. You can see on the left, 16 and 8, where on the right we have 1 and 1. Big difference there. Next we have particle sampling. On the left we have a value of 2, and on the right a value of 5. Now, the particle sampling, the higher the value, makes it so you have more particles. It's very subtle here, but you could see a little bit on the right, it has quite a bit more particles. Also, it's quite a bit slower as well. Next is the narrow bandwidth. Now, the higher the value results in thicker band of fluid and also increased particles. Again, it's pretty subtle, but you can see the one on the right has a value of 20 and the one on the left has a value of 3. And you can see the, a little bit the difference of what that gives us with increasing this value. The next option is fractional obstacles. Basically, this smoothens the obstacle boundary. The one on the left, it's off, and you can see on the boundary, it's more sharp, especially on the corners. But look at the one on the right. You will see that on the corners, it's a lot more rounded, the fluid, when it hits it. So it smoothens out the boundary walls for the fluid. Next is the up-res factor. Now this is basically the mesh simulation is scaled up by this factor, and also the particle radius plays in with it, and the particle radius results in larger meshed particles. You can see a little bit the difference here. On the left, we have a value of 2 for each, and on the right, a value of 4. And you can see what that gives us. And then we have smoothing positive, which basically smooths the mesh in a positive way. You can see on the right, uh, with a value of 40, which is scaled up way too much, but it basically smooths out the mesh very drastically to where it disappears. And on the left, we have a value of 1. Next, we have negative smoothing, which does the opposite and makes it look a little bit blocky. 
You'll see on the right with a negative smoothing of 40, it kind of looks like plateau and the water is very, very blocky. It's a really cool effect though. The one on the left is the just the default value, negative of 1, and you can see the differences there. Next is the effector object. On the left we have no object, and on the right we have a collision object as an effector, and this is if you want other objects to interact or affect your fluid right there. How cool is that? Super fun. And then lastly, we have spray, foam, and bubbles. We can actually bake all of these into the simulation. On the left, we have none, and on the right, they're represented by the red, blue, and green objects that you see there. Obviously, you would create bubbles and create more representative objects for those. All right, Blender Maniacs, now that we've taken a look at some of the settings for the new fluid system using Mantaflow, in the next part of this little series with the fluid system, we're actually going to be creating a scene such as a beach, a waterfall, or liquid chocolate, or something like that, and taking what we learned so far and actually creating a little scene. But until then, make sure to head on over to BlenderMania3.com, join the community there. Also, subscribe to this YouTube channel. I post new videos every single week, uh, almost daily. So with that, subscribe. I look forward to connecting with you. I'll see you in the next tutorial. Ciao for now. Au revoir.